somewhere in Kansas. Blake and I drove up yesterday. And Brad and I both drew Kansas whitetail archery tags this year. It's gonna be special this year. Like I said, we drove up last night and met Jerry, and he went around and showed us these places today. That they're just unbelievable. This is our first setup we've hung, our new Millennium stands, and getting them all set up, and just getting me itching for, it's getting me itching for whitetail season for sure. We still gotta go elk hunting, but we're gonna be sitting right here, first week of November, hoping to see some rutting bucks. Hello, I'm Wilbur Primos. All these hunts are exactly as they happen. There's no fancy edits, there's no stage scenes. The calling you're gonna hear is excited calling, but all these hunts are as they actually happen, and that's why we call it the truth about hunting. When the truth began in 1987, we had no idea where this journey would take us. 30 years later, we're still having fun. Welcome to Primo's Truth About Honey. Primo's Truth About Hunting is brought to you by Bushnell, Savage, Federal, Matthews Archery, Drake, Mossy Oak, Polaris, and Primo's Hunting, Speak the Language. I have thought about this day since my tag came in the mail. It's been burning a hole in my pocket, so I'm very excited to go. And first time going deer hunting up there, so I'm pumped. Went up there, hung stands, and we we got our climbers too, just in case. And we got extra stands up there in case we have to adapt and overcome. You don't ever know, but we are ready. Well, one thing about coming here, they know they're going to eat good. He make you drive the whole way. The whole he, way. He didn't do anything but sit there drove, and gripe the whole time. He drove the last 30 minutes. Brad's a little bit behind us. We got separated this morning and he got hung up in traffic, but he'll be along. Does Brad, that mean, does that Brad, mean we got to wait supper on him? Absolutely uh, not. <laughs> he wants to get hung up in traffic. We're going to eat. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> oh, man, just we're looking at trail camera pictures. We was wondering what your ETA was. We was figuring out what plans for tomorrow were going to be. I'm going to stay in Wichita tonight because I got an 8 o'clock call in the morning. Okay, I got you. I got you. Jordan will probably roll out in the morning with Troy, and then I'll be here when you get here, and we can figure out a plan for tomorrow evening. I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow. All right. All right, Tim. We'll see you. First morning in Kansas. Thank goodness for Onyx. We dropped some pins and we were hanging stands up here. And it's on the way I know how to get around. The thing looks the same. Cornfields and squares with roads running through. We're not in we're not in Kansas anymore, darling. We in Kansas. I'd say we're off to a good start in Kansas. We were just getting all the cameras and stuff set up, but I was sitting there trying to get this little camera set up. Looked over there, and there's a buck walking right across the bean field. We've had a bunch of pictures of him. Real nice, three-year-old, maybe four deer. But Mr. Jerry's wanting to shoot mature deer, so got to do what the man wants us to do. But hey, that's a good start. With the wind blowing like it is, we gotta make some noise for them to hear us. <laughs> See what happens.
minutes and already flung an arrow. That's one last Mr. Randy Anderson ain't got to worry about it, Mr. Jerry's. Oh, yoke dog, I don't think I'm ever going to pass up the opportunity to shoot a coyote. They are just, they're tough on a deer herd. A lot more people think, especially yearling fawns. And just like as a yearling buck, two of them trailing him. I don't know if they were going to attack him or not, but they acted like they were hungry. We got a lot to do today. We're gonna go check some cameras, hang one more set. We're gonna try to be back in the tree as soon as possible. Get this joker out of here so we may be hunting back here again. This segment of The Truth is brought to you by Black Gold and Ripcord. Brad finally rolled in around midday just in time to hit the ground running for an evening hunt. The afternoon was slow, seeing only a few young bucks cruising looking for a hot doe. But the only thing heating up is the unseasonably warm Kansas winds and the November harvest of soybeans and milo all across this region. The next two days proved to be the same. Warm temperatures and very little deer movement was par for the course. Those big old swamp donkeys this area is known for are nowhere to be found. But there's hope on the horizon. The forecast is calling for a major cold front on November 7th. Both Jordan and Brad have several setups waiting on that northwest wind to come across the plains of Kansas. It's cold this morning. I think it's 25 degrees. And the wind chill is about 10. major temperature change last night. But we just got set up in the stand and looked back here and there's a buck just going crazy trying to smell a doe and I guess there's been a hot doe come through here because we no sooner got done looking at him, looked on top of the hill and there's another little buck just running down the ridge. We've been hunting down here in this corner the last couple of days. That's where we called up at eight point yesterday. But we've been seeing, couldn't see it on camera, but we've been seeing several deer walking down through here. They just appear right here. So we came up here and looked. And there's a pond right here. It's got deer tracks all around it. What we're thinking is, as deer are coming off bean fields, that's two miles over there. They're coming over the saddle. Kind of see a little low spot on the ridge here. And this is the first water they're getting to after getting to them bean fields. So hopefully our plan works. Looks like it's, the rut is happening this morning. Mm -hmm. I think it's about time to knock his horns together. Mm -hmm. Coming out of the wood line. You see him? Oh, hey, he's right under us. It's the same buck that came by yesterday. That little guy, our young guy, ain't that little. Did not like being smoked weeds at, which tells me there's a big one around here somewhere that he's scared of. Got the old heart pumping there. I didn't know what he was. I could see his legs. Oh. Ain't seen nothing in a little bit. 
try and knock these horns together and see if we can get lucky. This worked once this morning. Big buck right here, Troy. Big buck. Oh, God. You see him? Yeah, I got him. He's running up his edge. <laughs> He's coming by that big tree right there. Downwind. I think he smelt us. It's coming right here. Seventy. And I call. He knew something was up. Did you see the size of that buck? He was huge. That joker had to have been 20 yards from the other stand. <laughs> but, you know, we've been seeing these bucks this morning. They're all down there. I wonder if we all might tear down a lock on and tear stuff and just go sit in it. That's, man, that's where they're at this morning. Holy smokes, that big old deer. It's probably the biggest deer I've ever seen when I've been hunting. Twenty-two degrees out there, and we're going deer hunting. Yesterday, we saw three or four bucks that came out right by the stand where we've been hunting the day before that. So we went and got it back ready to hunt this morning. We're gonna go get in it. Hopefully, they don't go where we were hunting yesterday. So I don't know, dude. the stand back to our original spot where he walked 20 yards by yesterday hopefully he'll do the same today we're about a few just a few minutes behind getting in here because well we come into this stand through this creek bottom I mean, it was a pretty nice 10 point chasing doe what did i think it was a mature deer first and he was just not really chasing the doe just following her that's how them older deer usually do <clears throat> They just follow them until they get ready instead of running like them young ones. After several days only seeing young bucks cruising, Brad was hoping this cold front would have the big boys up and on their feet. But no matter which stand Brad chooses or what the weather gives him, it seems Brad has been hanging out in the shallow end of the kiddie pool this week. Yeah, we've seen a lot of bucks. We've seen a pretty buck this morning, but all young, we haven't seen a mature one yet. It's coming up. We're using up all our bad luck. We got good luck on the way. 734. The cows don't come in the bottom, T. Man, that's walking hamburger right there. Hope they don't screw us up. There's about five or six of them in there right now. They all up on the deer trail. <laughs> you don't wait till about 8 o'clock to ride them, maybe? I work for you. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, probably, I'm gonna do some grunting first before I do that, but I'm just gonna see what happens for a little bit. Troy, deer right there. Where? Back there by our other stand. You serious? He's a shooter, big, big buck, big buck. I gotta spin around. You on him, T? I'm gonna grunt at him.
Looks like he's coming behind us, ain't he? Yeah, he's coming down the tree line. Okay, get turned around. Can you see No, I can't see anything. He's gonna drop right there. Man, I'm about to fall off this tree because it's shaking so bad, but Oh my god. Troy. That's a giant. We've run it so hard this week. 30 yards from where we were sitting yesterday. <laughs> I grunted, it's so quiet this morning. I took the book over too, and I just went. And he looked, he heard it. He said, come check it out, man. The good thing about these darn millennium stands, the rail goes so far out, I could get over here. That was a beautiful deer. And I always dreamed about doing it. Here I am. Thank you, Lord. For Primo Surround View Blinds as seen on the truth, go to Primo's.com. This segment of the truth is brought to you by Ozonics and Tight Spot Quivers. That jerker come across up there. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. He's walking right by our stand from yesterday. I mean, he came 30 yards from it. 30 yard shot right in that hole. He's going through that gap. I got the butt or two out. I just, he heard it. I get, I guess he could hear them cows walking around down there. And he had to come check it out, dude. Let's go look at him. That's my, I ain't no doubt, that's my biggest deal with Buck. I know body-wise, he's definitely the biggest. Like a, a steer walking across here. That tree's got the most cover of anything right around here. T Roy was my cover. I'll sit behind him going, Where's he at? You got yourself another taxidermist bill. I don't know if Jesse gonna like that. <laughs> That's by far my biggest deer with a bow, man. Biggest one would, would be Rocker's brother last year. We've had a fun week hunting with Mr. Jerry. He treats us like family and treats me like a son, and we've had some really good hunts over the years we've got to go elk hunting together and we've got to turkey hunt together and the cool thing about hunting mr jerry kind of back to the ways we all grew up hunting you got to figure them out and move stands around like we have several times and it's been a fun fun week he's just our buddy he lets us come up here and do it ourselves hunting let's go to the house and show brad and mr jerry mr jerry's gonna be so excited hey. Hey. We got her done. I appreciate you. We couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> Got her done. Got it. Got it. Oh my God. 
pretty, ain't it? That is a beautiful deer. Thank you. Congrats. That's a nice deer. Man. And this is the one you seen yesterday morning? I believe so. Same deer. So. So. Not if this is twin. Huh. It's just real recognizable because you've got the shorter twos and the threes. So he, he come by the stand you set in yesterday morning. <laughs> 30 yards from it. Oh my and I God. grunted at him and he turned around and looked. Here he comes. That's a good one. That's why you come to Kansas, son. That's right. Well, it seems like we're always unloading in the dark and loading in the dark. Always. You gotta make use of daylight. <laughs> well, you gotta, there's your nice buck right there. You got caped out and ready to be mounted. You know, I had a, I had several chances at deer that were just a little too young and yeah. didn't come all the way out here to shoot a small buck, but I had much fun. You got a big one, so. Yeah, we got to see the rutting <laughs> yeah. that we ain't seen in several yeah. years, so. Yeah, we're not gonna see no rut in November at Cockmouth. No. <laughs> we're still five, six weeks out for it before yep. we see our rut. Yeah. But it was a good time, and man, how about Mr. Jerry and Miss Diane, they, they're just a gracious host to share their land, their home, and their, their meals with us. And they've treated me like their son, you know, over the years. <laughs> Shoot, it's like, it's like, it's like coming here, staying, staying with the family, you know? Mm -hmm. It is. I think it's better than staying with family. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to finish loading up, and we're going to hit the road. Headed back to Cottonmouth now. It's a heck of a trip.